what is going on everybody today is march 29th and we have the first day of baseball today uh for those of you that do not know me my name is josh engelman i am the director of content at awesomeo.com url up there um for the past five months or so i've been doing daily uh strategy videos for the nba at my own personal youtube channel and then starting this week, uh, I came on board awesomeo.com, moved my basketball content there, and we'll be doing uh, daily strategy videos for MLB as well. Um, we're going to have a ton of content out on the site uh, today, hitters articles, pitchers articles, stacks articles. Uh, we're going to try to cover as much as we can for you guys on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, for these first couple shows, it'll likely just be me uh, rambling over uh, this view, which you see here. For those familiar with the basketball sheets, you know, this will look relatively similar. Obviously, different sport and all. But uh, for those of you that aren't, uh, I try to get everything on one sheet. Um, uh, so, you know, we've got a lot to look at, a lot to go over. I'll break down each game, you know, in a little bit of depth. Um, don't want to let the video go to uh, a crazy length, especially on days where we have, you know, this many games, although we're already down to. Uh, but moving forward, um, we're going to have some guests. It'll be a little bit different than what my NBA show had been previously. Um, going to have a two-man booth uh, more often than not, so we'll, we'll have the opportunity to have a lot of discussion, and you won't just have to listen to my rambly voice or me sipping on my coffee uh, 25 times per video. I'll be able to mute, slurp my stuff, transition on to uh, someone else, and then uh, I'll be back and you guys won't even know that I've been slurping away. Um, process for this is probably, you know, admittedly going to be a little clunky to start. Um, I've been talking about basketball basically 24 seven for the past five months including this morning's strategy video. So flipping the switch is probably going to hurt my brain a little bit. Um, but plenty of familiarity with baseball. Uh, at one point in time, baseball was my sport. I, um, I could not get enough of fan graphs. I could not get enough of baseball prospectus. I read baseball prospectus almanacs on the can at my parents' house over and over and over again. Uh, subscriber to Baseball America. Baseball was my jam. Um, I started getting into basketball a little bit more and more, but uh, baseball has never left my heart. Um, big, big fan of baseball. Little known fact, before Fangraphs was really uh, ramping up to Fangraphs, I had a small Braves blog when they did uh, individual team blogs. This was probably... 2005-ish, way back in time. Um, so baseball is my thing, and I'm ready to dive into it. And actually, I'm ready to have something else to talk about. So I've rambled an intro long enough. Uh, let's dive into it. First game up, we have uh, Marlins hosting the Cubs. Early start. Uh, Cubs, significant favorites here. Um, I have the lines loaded elsewhere, and I've translated those into expected runs and expected winning percentage. So Cubs expected to score 4.7 runs, um, Marlins 3.3. Uh, we've got a Cubs win percentage of 66%. I think we should go ahead and take a look at weather. Shouldn't matter. We should be totally fine. Day game, um, not too much to worry about with regards to weather for this game. We're already down Tigers, Pirates, and Reds, Nats. Both uh, will be rained out. We've got a couple other games that are looking dicey, so you know we'll talk about that as we get there. I'll start with the Marlins. Um, and right away, uh, you can, I know there's gonna be a lot of color on the screen right now. Um, so I am focused here for right now. We have tables of positions of FanDuel guys with their position and salary. Uh, with DraftKings guys over here, I'll individually pull out positions since we have uh, dual positional eligibility. Makes it a little bit harder to filter a pivot table. But uh, if we need to take a look at, say, first baseman, for instance, 
you know, I can quickly get to that info. So I'm going to bounce around a lot, uh, try to point everything out as much as I can, and uh, we'll go from there. Some of the stats that I'm looking at right now, um, just generally basic stuff. I should probably change that highlight. Still dialing this sheet in to make sure I'm giving everybody, you know, the information that I think is super relevant for, uh, for the particular day. Uh, if there's anything you're ever wondering if I look at, you know, feel free to check or hit me up in the comments or on Twitter. You know, happy to add things, happy to make this a little bit more visible for everybody. I want this experience to be um, as good as it gets for everyone. Uh, I'm going to be around for uh, the entire summer. So if there's something that you don't like out of the gate, let me know because it's going to be a long six months. <laughs> um, so like I said, there's a lot of color, but feel free to use the traffic light principle. Green is good. Yellow, show some caution. Red, not really something I'm going to be interested in. Uh, first one, when we look at the Marlins, you're obviously seeing a lot of red. I don't see a ton um, that is appealing to me. I think that Lewis Brinson in a one-off scenario looks like he would be fine um, on FanDuel in particular. Uh, value on DK is okay. Uh, but I don't see a ton of uh, interesting upside for him. But with his price on FanDuel, I think that he could be worth a, you know, a single plug. It's hard. I don't see a lot of um, stackability in the Marlins for two reasons. One, um, they're not projected to score a, a ton of runs. They have a very difficult chance of picking up a, a W tonight. Um, so, or this afternoon, I guess. Hell, two hours from now. Um, so for me, I will likely be avoiding almost all of the Marlins. Uh, I play a little bit more on FanDuel than I do on DraftKings. So you can, you'll hear a little bit of a FanDuel slant coming from me. Um, I think more of my, uh, my colleagues at awesomeo.com lean a little bit more towards DK if, I, if I'm correct. So you'll get a lot of perspective on both. I'll touch on Lewis Brinson a little bit on FanDuel. Um, I'll touch a little bit as a value play on Brian Anderson. But for me, I'm going to have a hard time stacking anything on the Marlins. That would be a very, very contrarian play uh, running into Leicester and the Juggernaut Cubs. Now, um, for Jose Urena... Uh, I don't really see him in a position to be rostered. Uh, he looks terrible on DK uh, on a site where you you know could be running out or would be running out two pitchers, and uh, I don't see a ton of value for him on FanDuel either. Uh, he's a complete stay away in my opinion. Now for the Cubs, um, surprise surprise, this is going to look a little bit better. Four point seven expected runs. Uh, great. That's a great total for today. Pricing looks pretty good. Um, I'm inclined to say it looks a little bit better on DK. So there are definitely some uh, applicable stacks coming out of uh, Chicago. Uh, I'm probably going to be all over anybody in that top five. Uh, particularly, I think Wilson Contreras on um, on FanDuel looks like a really great catcher play if I filter down here just to look at the catchers themselves and these are all sorted by uh, salary to start so while Contreras is the second uh, second most expensive catcher um, I've got him at the second highest projection and a really solid value number so uh, lumping him in with some of the other guys in his order you know Rizzo or Schwarber uh, I think could pay some dividends for you you should expect some runs coming out of the Cubs, that's for sure. Uh, I would say that Ian Happ looks uh, a little bit better on DK than he does on FanDuel. But for me, uh, Cubs are going to be one of my focuses. Um, I'm not sure that I'll be in the minority for that. But I think running out any sort of three or four man stacks of... Uh, Hat, Bryant, Rizzo, Contreras, and Schwarber, uh, they'll all look, you know, pretty good for you. I don't entirely mind Addison Russell on DK. Um, 
but I think your bread will get buttered a little bit better uh, at the top shelf of, of Chicago. Um, for pitching, uh, I think that, you know, if you want to run Lester out there, uh, I don't necessarily love him on DK. It doesn't strike me as the best value. I kind of feel the same way about him on FanDuel. But he should be very much in line for picking up a win, which is obviously gigantic. Um, Don't forget that uh, Lester has a little bit of trouble. Um you know, throwing over to first, so keep that in mind, but I don't think that the Marlins are going to be in any real position to punish him for that, so my focus will be through those top five guys um, for the Cubbies. Uh, Contreras is the guy that I would say I like the most, but I think that Chris Bryant, and I'm I'm not telling you guys anything you don't already know, I think Chris Bryant looks like uh, one of the better values at third as a combination of value and and overall ceiling um i like him a lot tonight uh i feel sort of the same way about rizzo just a little bit less value uh the forty six hundred dollar price point is a little high for me um but if i'm gonna roll out any stacks uh the cubs will be a, a large majority of that um from a from a high end standpoint so I, t- I sort of look at it in two separate ways. I think there are solid stacks for uh, top end, so high end offenses like the Cubs, um, and then I'll also see I'll also try to work in high value stacks, guys that are probably underpriced on other teams uh, that I can try to combine to save some money. So for me, it's all offense from the Cubs. No thank you, really, on Lester. It'll be a very minimal amount, if any. And for the Marlins, um, there's just not a ton of upside out there. Now we'll head to Mets and Cardinals. Uh, Mets with a 3.5 expected run total, 56% chance of winning. Uh, Cardinals with a 3.0 expected run total, 44% chance of winning. Um, We'll take a look at the pitchers to start. That's probably a better idea. And I was going to touch on this uh, for the Marlins and Cubs and totally forgot. So what we're looking at here, just to start, um, this would be Steamer's projection for uh, for that particular player um, for their on-base percentage, their slugging, and then sort of an indicator of uh, how they do on the base pass. So I want to know, you know, how often do people get on? um, How well do they smash the ball? And uh, are they going to be picking up any steals? And then I like to look at the expected run numbers to sort of gauge the amount of runs and RBIs we can expect from a given team. Um, Now, while these numbers are in the same spot, I I tried to put an indicator down here for the pitching. Um, What we're looking at are Ks per nine, walks per nine, and FIP. And these are all projected numbers from Steamer. I'll be updating those every day uh, based on the Steamer updates that are on Fangraphs. For projections like this, uh, I don't like to reinvent the wheel. Um, Steamer and Zips are, um, you know, as good as they're going to get out there, and they're all publicly available. So when looking at information in a raw form, I love just looking at those projections because um, it's just it's high quality work that's available at a moment's notice, and you know I, I find that to be pretty valuable it gets you 80 percent of the way there um just as visual indicators it's a bigger game than that obviously um so for Syndergaard not really priced uh the way that I would like it to be um I see significantly better value at the pitching spot for FanDuel in his sort of salary area like I'd have a I'd have an easier time going to Severino or even just you know paying up a little bit more and going to someone like Sale, uh, who's obviously going to be exceptionally popular today. Um, for DK, I can see it a little bit more, but you know second highest expensive or second highest price, you know across the entire board. Um, I'd have a hard time not wanting to go to Kershaw over Syndergaard 
just based on that pricing and then pick up some value further down the line. But, you know, I think Syndergaard looks okay. And on DK especially, he might be a little bit better of a pivot from Sale, who I would expect to have a little bit higher ownership. Uh, from a from a lineup perspective, um, if I were stacking anything here on FanDuel, it would probably just be uh, Cespedes and Bruce. Um, but I don't I don't see a lot of value in the Mets themselves. This should be a relatively low scoring game. You know the pitching is 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 good, and that makes me a little bit worried about grabbing any offense here. Um, there's a small chance of rain. Uh, we've got 41% chance of rain at 2 p.m., 43% chance at 3 p.m. So it doesn't appear like that would um, you know, ruin a game, but it is something to think about you know, with regards to Sintagard or Martinez. Um, if that forecast looked a little bit stronger towards the opening of the game, you don't want to have a guy you know, throw three innings and then hit, get hit with a rain delay on opening day. There's a real realistic chance that um, he might not come back out for that. You don't want to. You don't want to have guys sitting for a while and then running back out there. So that's probably another knock uh, on Syndergaard or or Carlos Martinez. Um, so I would look at Cespedes and and Jay Bruce on Fanduel if I were looking to have any little bit of stack for the Mets. But there's not a there's not a ton to love here. Um, you know, like I'm not, I'm not totally wild about Asdrubal Cabrera. Uh, I think there are plenty of other values at second base tonight or this afternoon that can get you to where you need to be. Now, the top end of DK for the Mets, I think, could look a little bit better. Um, you can go with any sort of combo of Brandon Nimmo, uh, Cespedes, Bruce, and Cabrera. Um, they're just priced slightly better on DK than they are on FanDuel. If it were me, I would still be focusing on Cespedes and Bruce, uh, but I think that you can get to a Met stack if that if that's sort of your bag. Um, but there's just not a ton of value out there for the Mets. Um, it's it's not really the best matchup. Uh, there's a there's a lot more opportunity out there on a slate this gigantic. So that's sort of where I'm leaning right now. For the Cardinals, I think it's a little bit easier to, to make a broad decision here. We'll talk about Carlos Martinez first. You know, great peripheral stats, 9Ks per 9. Um, you know, walks are a little high, but FIP looks good. I've always liked Carlos Martinez. Um, I think that he could be an interesting value play on FanDuel. Um, 7,900, uh, he projects out from a value perspective very well. Um, you do have to be a little bit weary of the fact that they're, you know, pretty sizable underdogs, but there's definitely upside in in running Carlos Martinez out, and I don't feel the same way about him on DraftKings, where his salary of eleven one is is probably a bit too high for sort of the status of this game. Um, I think it'll be hard for him to be able to pull out value on DK, comparatively speaking. Uh, now, for the lineups, I don't see much to like coming out of the Cardinals. They won't be a team that I'm looking to stack. And in terms of just having any individual bits of this game, uh, you know, maybe Dexter Fowler. Um, maybe a little Marcelo Zuna. But I don't think that the Cardinals are going to be a place where uh, magic is going to happen tonight. Um, they're, they're largely in a void for me. So no need to touch on Tigers and Pirates. That game has already been postponed. So we'll head to Baltimore. Orioles hosting the Minnesota Twins. Now this one is going to be chock full of stuff to look at. Uh, no issues with weather. Um, so we can take an actual look at this game. Uh, Orioles projected 4.7 runs, 54% uh, chance to win. Twins, 4.3 expected runs, 46% uh, chance to win. We've got Dylan Bundy against Jake Odorizzi. Um, 
neither guy is, I don't know, what's the best way to say this? Both of these guys, <laughs> on paper, four years ago, this would have been a hell of a matchup. Uh, now, you know, their careers have gone in sort of different directions. So for Bundy, um, you know, you can talk me into a flyer on him. There is upside in Dylan Bundy's arm that, you know, could be unlocked this year. Uh, I think he's a decent value play in the middle tier of pitchers. Um, but, you know, very boom bust in my opinion. Especially against uh, some of these guys in the Twins lineup. Now, for Bundy on DK, I like him a lot more if you're running out two pitchers. I think there's some value to be had. Uh, Orioles playing at home. You know, decent chance to win. I'd have no problem rostering Bundy on DraftKings. For the lineups, plenty of opportunities for rolling out stacks. Um, I wouldn't have any problem using really anybody here. One key takeaway... One thing to remember, um, you lose about a tenth of a plate appearance uh, every step down the order. So it's always better to get guys next to each other and higher up the, the, the chain, so to speak. So I'm going to end up having a lot of everything you see for the Orioles. You can obviously tell there's a ton of bright green here. Uh, Beckham, Scope, Machado... Uh, Jones, Mancini, all the way down to Chris Davis. I think all of these guys look great. Um, I don't have much of a problem taking anybody here. Uh, we could definitely see uh, the Orioles get a little homer happy. Um, I'd be more than okay with checking that out. If we look through some of the positional stuff, we can see how well these guys are grading out for me. Um, so we'll start with Beckham. Uh, where are we hiding them? Why can't I see him? Oh, God. Just dead in the middle. I was looking higher. So, mid-tier salary, but gigantic upside in this matchup. Um, one of the best value third baseman on the board tonight. And that's true whether we're looking at FanDuel or DraftKings. If I sort that by... Uh... Oop, I need shortstop there. My bad. So, we've got... Beckham here as one of the best value plays at short for DK. And we've got Beckham as one of the best value plays at third on FanDuel. Um, regardless of the site, regardless of the position, uh, he's someone that I think uh, you should certainly be looking at. I feel the same sort of way about Scope. Um, high end, you know, he's the four, or third highest uh, salaried second baseman on FanDuel. We'll grab him here a little bit further down the line um, on DK. But again, on both sites, projects well from a total perspective, projects well from a value perspective. And that's how I feel about everybody that's on this Orioles squad. Lots and lots of three, four person stacks with some combination of Beckham, Scope, Machado, Adam Jones. All the way down, Trey Mancini, Chris Davis. I'm, I'm completely in on the Orioles. Uh, I think they will be a very popular stack, and uh, I think that's with good reason. Um, they've got a lot of good bats, and uh, it, we could see them get pretty homer happy. Now, let's head back to pitching, and we'll take a look at the Twins. Um, not the biggest fan of Jake Odorizzi. Uh, I don't think that he grades out well. Uh, he's a non-play for me on FanDuel, and he's a non-play for me on DraftKings. The less said about him is the better. Now, for the Twins lineup, I think that you could also get in on a twin stack. Um, 4.3 expected runs is not shabby. You know, they have a chance to win this game. And I think the top line of Dozier, Maurer, Sano, and Eddie Rosario... Logan Morrison, I guess, as well. I just got, like, a personal thing with Logan Morrison. I've never really liked him, but I should probably uh, not bring my personal slant to these videos. Um, it's just one of those things for me. Uh, lots to like here. I, you could basically, you could stack this whole game if you wanted to. Um, Dozier grades out 
very, very well on both sides at a position where, you know, there's not exactly a ton of high-end talent. Um, while he's the second most expensive second baseman on FanDuel, uh, he does grade out with a, a really nice amount of value. So no problems using Dozier. No problems using Dozier on either site. Um, that's an incredible on-base percentage, incredible slugging percentage. Can move around a little bit. Um, no issues using Dozier. I feel the same sort of way about Maurer. Obviously not fleet of foot any longer, but um, great projected on-base percentage. Uh, should be a relatively safe play today. Um, no problems using Maurer at all. Uh, Sano, one of my favorite uh, young guys in the league, just mashes the ball, which is highly attractive in a fantasy uh, perspective. Um, five, projected 513 slugging. Uh, only second to Machado in this entire game. Uh, dudes can rake. Two, just lots and lots of young quality talent here. I like Beckham. You know, might not grade out as well. I've liked Scope for a while and Machado. Adam Jones, not exactly young anymore. Um, but I like both of these teams. Uh, I sneakily like the Orioles like way more than I should. Um, just in case you didn't notice, I'm a Braves fan. So we won't. We, we don't need to talk too much about the Braves. We'll get there when I talk about how much I hate the Phillies. Um, so, yeah, uh, I like stacks a lot for the Twins. I think Dozier, Maurer, Sano, Rosario, Logan Morrison, you can combine those guys into any three- and four-man stacks and be pretty happy about it. Um, and, you know, I don't necessarily mind someone like max kepler as a as a one-off value play on fanduel i think that um in this particular game it might be worth a shot i should probably loop back up and say that uh i don't necessarily love colby rasmus if he is batting in the nine hole these are all projected lineups or at least mostly projected lineups so you know everything that i'm talking about is subject to change slightly as people get moved around the order and as we get some um definitive lineups uh, at awesomeo.com, you'll have uh, Alex's rankings out. Um, you know, they, they will be updated for any sort of changes that happen. Um, I do think Rasmus is in a, in a nice spot from a value perspective, particularly at the $2,000 price point on FanDuel. Um, I'm just usually a little wary of taking anybody that's hitting at the bottom of the order just because of the lack of plate appearances. Um, a lot of value that you get from having stacks comes from... Um, turning the order over it's not so much that these guys are, are next to each other in the order it's that they get additional opportunities every plate appearance is worth you know two three fantasy points depending on who you are so just getting the extra opportunity is gigantic and that's uh, a little bit harder to do when you're batting in the nine hole now back to the twins uh, like i said I don't have any problem stacking this entire game, grabbing guys from both sides. Uh, just avoid the pitching. Uh, there's a lot more hitting to be found here. Let's move to the Rangers. I have no concept of how long I've been talking. Um, I forgot to look at the clock when I started. This one's going to be a long one. Apologize in advance. We'll go to the Rangers. Uh, Rangers are hosting the Astros. Uh, Rangers with the 4.2 expected runs, 39% win percentage, not the best. Uh, Astros, 5.3 expected runs, um, and you're looking at a 61% chance to win the game. Uh, that is going to be pretty big. We'll look at pitching to start for both sides. Uh, we've got Cole Hamels uh, up against Justin Verlander. Um, for Hamels, not the best play for me on FanDuel. Uh, he won't really be someone that I'm looking at, and that's mostly due to you know, how up against it they are. Uh, very little chance of picking up that W. Um, and then on DraftKings, I like him even less. I don't see a ton of value there. For Verlander, um, no problems taking Verlander on FanDuel. I think he's in a sort of weird spot from a salary perspective, but should be very likely to pick up a W. Um, price isn't the worst. You know, there are there's just no no reason to not have him. There there are better options for sure, guys with a, a bit higher end. But I think Verlander grades out with a decent amount of value. 10 Ks per nine is is a monster number. 
Um, very, very little walks. He's got great control. Uh, very safe play, in my opinion, Justin Verlander. Now, Verlander on DK is not someone I'm going to seek out. Uh, I don't see the value in him at 11-6. And at that price and knowing I needed to grab another pitcher, uh, it, I think that it would be a pretty tough fit. Um, so when looking at the Rangers, uh, while everybody's grading out pretty well, particularly on FanDuel from a value perspective, um, I think that their upside is relatively limited, and that's just because they've got a they've got real tough sledding um, coming in against Verlander. I don't have a huge problem rostering anybody on a one-off basis. But I think having a stack here would be a little scary for me. Um, they grade out, like I said, they grade out pretty well um, on an individual basis. But I can see Verlander having a scenario where he really limits their opportunities. Um, so the Rangers are not going to be a team that I'm looking to overtly stack. Uh, They'll probably be re like an interesting contrarian stack, but I don't. It's not really for me. Um, if we head over and look at the weather, uh, no weather issues whatsoever for this game, so we should be able to proceed as as we need to. Uh, the more interesting team to me is obviously the Astros, and here you're getting a ton of the top end of uh, of talent on the board. Um, anybody, whether it's Springer, Bregman, Altuve, Correa, Josh Reddick, Marwin Gonzalez, Gaddis. You know, I wish Gaddis wasn't hitting in the eight hole, but you know, here we are. Just avoid Brian McCann and Derek Fisher. Um, I don't like Derek Fisher in the NBA. I certainly don't like him in, uh, in baseball either. Uh, that's my first slurp. Um, I generally forget that I'm speaking to the public and I slurp my coffee like a dick. My apologies in advance. I try to remember as much as I can, but I ultimately forget pretty much immediately after I start recording. So stack wise, um, you know, it's going to cost you a pretty solid amount of money to be stacking the Astros, but I think that that could pay uh, some pretty good dividends for you. Um, lots and lots of upside, lots of runs here. Uh, if we want to look a little bit further at someone like Bregman. A couple guys significantly more expensive than him, but between this matchup and that price, uh, he grades out really well. I would expect to have a ton of Alex Bregman. Um, if we take a look at the little man, Jose Altuve, um, by far the highest paid uh, second baseman on the FanDuel slate, 4,300. But no reason to think that he can't fill up the stat sheet um, or fill up the scorebook, I guess. Got to drop that basketball terminology. Um, he's a really solid value, even at 4,300. Um, if you want to pay up for high-end talent, I don't have a problem at all going for Altuve. Um, I feel similar about Carlos Correa. Uh, when I look at Correa... Uh, highest rated or highest uh, salaried um, shortstop on FanDuel for the day. But again, high, high end talent. Uh, I don't mind rostering studs. There's a lot to bring with you for the Astros to make um, some really nice stacks. So I would have no problem seeking out the Astros. Again, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. They're going to be popular as they should be. There's a ton of value there to, to find, and uh, I highly recommend them. Um, I'm not as huge on Bregman on DK, but I still think that it looks pretty good. Uh, my focus would be more on the Springer, Altuve, Correa, Redick um, group. And then I think Gaddis works as just like a general fill-in, hoping to catch a, catch a home run in a bottle. Um, I just don't love uh, his place in the batting order. To the Blue Jays. Jays hosting the Yankees. 
Um, Jays with a 3.9 expected run total, 42% chance to win. Yankees with a 4.6 expected run total, 58% chance to win. Um, obviously, the Yankees are in a much, much better scenario. Looks like I missed a Yankee. So let's figure out who I missed. Who's that five that's slipping through the cracks? Managing this stuff is a pain. One, two, three, four, six. Is it Aaron Hicks? Let's check that expected lineup. Ignore this website. I just know I need to go somewhere quickly to get this Yankees lineup. For some reason I missed whoever's in the five hole. The expected five hole at least. Am I blind? Yep, I am. It's Hicks. Thought so. Gotcha. Alright, now we're good to go. So we'll take a look at the hitter or the pitchers first. Uh, J.A. Happ on the hill for the Blue Jays. That should not make uh, Blue Jays fans particularly excited. Uh, I've never been much of a J.A. Happ fan. Um, but oddly enough, he grades out okay from uh, a value perspective. I don't necessarily love it um, because I think his upside in trying to get a victory here is pretty low. Um, but on a, a points per thousand perspective, uh, Hap looks okay on both sites. Uh, if you're looking to fade the Yankees, who may be you know a little popular because they're the Yankees, um, J. A. Hap is a very low end punt, but. That's not necessarily the, the direction I normally go. Uh, I don't really like scraping the bottom of the barrel for, for Hap um, or for guys like Hap. Uh, I, I want them to have at least one sort of main thing, a guy that can really you know sling the ball. Um, Hap is just sort of an innings eater guy, and uh, I, I think his upside is limited. So while that grades out well visually, and you see that green for him um, in both tables, I don't necessarily um, think that he'll be a part of a winning lineup. Now for Severino, um, looks really good to me on FanDuel. Uh, while he is 10K, um, and I would probably lean towards Verlander at $500 cheaper. Uh, wait. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're good. Oh, God. Got myself caught up there. Um, I would probably lean towards Verlander, but I'd prefer Severino. Um, now, if we look at Severino on DK... Where is he? Whew, God, even lower than I expected. Uh, not the best value play. Um, you know, I would rather look at someone like Corey Kluber, uh, who is likely to have a little bit more value uh, at a slightly higher price point, just an extra 100. Um, so Severino is not someone I'm totally paying attention to on DK. If we look at the Blue Jays lineup, there are things to like, um, but I don't necessarily love them from a stack perspective, at least on FanDuel. Uh, I don't think that uh, Donaldson and Smoke grayed out very well from a value perspective those would be two guys that i would want to stack back to back just for the extra plate appearances and the the synergy of hitting three four um i think i'd have a hard time getting there uh particularly because i think severino is a decent pitcher um now for travis or for russell martin i think those guys would be fine in one-off scenarios travis a little bit more so um and on FanDuel, they've got a little bit better value, but I wouldn't touch someone like Curtis Granderson. I think he's completely off the board. Um, I don't see a ton of stackable stuff for the Blue Jays. I feel like you'd be um, you'd be limiting yourself to go in that direction. If we take a look at weather, uh, it probably won't matter. Big time chance of rain, um, but I would imagine the roof will go up. So we should be fine there. Um, I just, I, Blue Jays are probably not a direction I'm going. I'll likely have, you know, one-off lineups with Travis or Martin. Maybe a little tiny bit of uh, Donaldson or Smoke on an individual basis just for some upside. 
Um, on DK, you can probably grab some Travis Donaldson smoke uh, stacks, and you'll get you know a little bit of synergy there, getting a two, three, four if that lineup is accurate. Um, but Blue Jays aren't the the spot for me. Yankees though, I think big time value for the Yankees across the board. They should not cap around. Expected 4.6 runs is, is very nice. Um, so any sort of combination of those top five guys, uh, Gardner, Judge, Stanton, Gary, Gary Sanchez, and Hicks, all look really good to me. Um, particularly that Judge, Stanton, Sanchez uh, triumvirate, but you know they are going to be popular. Uh, Sanchez, by far the highest paid uh, catcher on the slate. Um, 3,900, uh, not someone that I'm going to be overly excited to have. Uh, I've never been much of a Gary Sanchez fan. Uh, I should probably get on board, but uh, no issues taking a look at the Yankees. I think that um, they are in a position to have a big day. Um, they could put up some runs in bunches. Uh, if Hap had a slightly higher walk rate, I'd be a little nervous, but with that low K rate, against a team of sluggers like this. Um, he could be in for a long night against guys like Judge and Stanton, Sanchez. Um, these guys can mash the ball against anyone. And if the other, if the pitcher is not getting a ton of strikeouts, that means that ball is probably in play somewhere. And the last thing you want to do is let Judge or Stanton put a ball in play because they might put it into orbit. Um no problems having a Yankee stack. I think any of those top five guys are are certainly uh, possible. And then you can even get to someone like Didi Gregorius. Uh, I don't love him as much on FanDuel as I do on DK. If we take a look at shortstops here. Um, Gregorius, you know, not the best value play for me at shortstop. So it's it's something that I have a little, uh, I have very small interest in on, on FanDuel. Uh, if we take a look at him on DK, uh, I think it's a little bit better. Um, but there is that bunch below him of Seager, Elvis Andrews, and Cozart that I think are slightly better plays from a value perspective. Either way, uh, the big guns of the Yankees look like they could be in for uh, a nice night. And uh, I'd have no problem uh, looking to put a stack together there. One pause, and we're back. Potty break, guys. Not that you guys want to know that. Um, so Rays and Red Sox. Uh, the Rays with expected runs of 3.1. That is a 40% chance to win. Red Sox with 3.9 expected runs, 60% chance to win. And we're looking at uh, Chris Archer versus Chris Sale in the battle of the Chris's And... Based on that line, you should expect uh, Sale to come out of this victorious. I'll uh, look at Archer to start. Well, we'll look at um, Weather to start. Uh, doesn't matter uh, because of the dome. Forgot that this game wasn't in Boston. Um, so Archer actually grades out pretty well on FanDuel. Um, let's move this back over to Pitching. Um, Archer at 8,400 on, uh, on FanDuel, not the scariest sort of lineup for the Red Sox, at least from a scoring perspective. 3.9 runs is not a ton. Um, so I think there's possibilities for Archer to have, a, you know, a solid game. I'd prefer him to have a little bit higher end, but, uh, 10 Ks per nine, uh, under three walks per nine, Three and a half, fifth. That's all very solid. Uh, there's no reason that Archer can't go out and have a really good game. Um, I actually like him as sort of a contrarian uh, pitching option. Not as fond of him on DK. I don't love the price as much. Uh, I think he sort of blends in a little bit more. So not somebody that I would need to go out and prioritize. Now, uh, from a hitting perspective... I don't see the Rays as particularly viable. You can look at uh, Spawn, Matt Duffy, Kiermaier uh, stack, and it's got mild amounts of value, um, and that would be on FanDuel or DK, but you're running into Chris Sale, who's 
you know, one of the best pitchers on the planet. 11 Ks per nine, two walks per nine, almost uh, a sub three FIP. You're going to be in some trouble if you're trying to run head on into Chris Sale. So not a direction I'm looking at. I don't really want to talk too much about the Rays because they're just running up against it. Um, you know, you can get cute with a Duffy Kiermeyer stack, but I think you're probably getting a bit too cute. Now, sale, the big question for today is sort of the sale versus Kershaw debate. Um, Red Sox are 60% to win. I definitely like sale a lot. I think that he, just from a, a numbers perspective, I think sale grades out quite a bit better than Kershaw and FanDuel. Uh, but I think that Kershaw grades out a bit better on, on DK. So if I was playing on both sites, I'd probably use them both. But there's clearly no no issues with using Chris Sale. He's in line to have a monster game. Um, I would expect to need him quite a bit tonight. Or this afternoon, 4 o'clock, whatever time. Uh, now, lineup perspective. This is one where... There's good in there's good top end so like you know Betts, uh, Benintendi, you know JD Martinez, they all look great. Um, but from a value perspective, I don't love their prices. Um, Benintendi is probably the only guy that I'd be uh, particularly interested on in a solo basis from the Red Sox. Um, you can get there stacking guys like. Betts, Benintendi, and probably J.D. Martinez. But you're going to need some value pitching to sort of offset that because these guys aren't priced the best. Now on DK, the prices are a little bit better. I think that you can get Betts, Benintendi. I'm not the biggest Hanley fan, but J.D. Um, you can get those guys at a little bit easier price point. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't shy away there. I think Eduardo Nunez looks like he could be good, but again, I don't I don't love having the guy in the swing spot just because of his limited opportunities, and particularly in a game where both sides of the coin should be good from a pitching perspective, so it, extra plate appearances could be a little bit limited. I would want to focus on the top end here, and unfortunately, a lot of these Red Sox guys don't grade out as the best value plays. Um, I'll have them in little bits, but um, I... I it would be hard to stack the Red Sox heavily uh, and make lineups that are, are terribly efficient. Now we'll go to the A's. The Athletics hosting the Angels. Um, A's with a 4.3 expected run total, 44 per, 45% chance to win. Uh, Angels with 4.7 expected runs, 55% chance to win. We've got Kendall Graveman uh, going up against Garrett Richards. Uh, Graveman, not the best. Um, very, very piss poor uh, peripheral stats. Projected six x or six Ks per nine, two point eight walks, a four point six six FIP. Not really going to get it done. Um, I don't have any interest in using Graveman. You can sort of see him as a punt play, but on Fanduel, I, I wouldn't really want to go that direction. And um, on DK, uh, I think his salary is is not somewhere you would want to go for value especially with some of the other options that are in his area or below him. So for me, Graveman's a, a non-play. For Garrett Richards, um, I wouldn't touch him at all on FanDuel. I think he's dramatically overpriced for this matchup. Got a cough. Um, good, I'm off mute. Uh, on DK, I can see it. I would have less of a problem running out. Uh, Garrett Richards on DraftKings. I think that you can get to value a little bit better. 8Ks per 9, 3 walks per 9, a 3.88 FIP is not too shabby. Um, I think you can get to uh, both of these squads from a stack perspective. Um, these guys will be more of the the value type stacks with a, a little bit less high end. I'm talking about the A's right now. So grabbing like a Joyce, Jed Lowry, Chris Davis stack, I think um, could allow you to grab some... Uh, some more expensive guys at um, coming from other teams, more of the high end bats. Because we get, if we look at someone like Jed Lowry, let's pull him up here. Um, 
you know, Lowry towards the bottom of uh, salary for FanDuel second baseman, but, you know, hitting in the heart of the A's order, I think that there's a lot of upside there. And, uh, you know, while I think Garrett Richards is a, is a really solid pitcher, he's not someone that I'm getting scared away from. So, you know, Lowry looks like a good value here. Uh, he's a little bit less of a value on DK, um, a little bit closer to the top of the salary chart for uh, second baseman. But I have no problem running out any stacks with some of the A's guys. Uh, I don't expect them to be highly owned. And we could see a scenario um, where they're a really good value stack. I know Lowry doesn't really knock the cover off the ball, um, but like getting him on base with a 339 projected on base percentage with Chris Davis uh, right behind him to, to smash um, could be a, a really nice stack. Same with Matt Joyce, the 344 on base percentage is, is very solid. So grabbing the heart of the order for the A's. Um, no issues with it there. Um, no issues with weather. We could take a look at the Angels now. Um, now, Angels obviously looking both high end and value. Uh, no real fear of Kendall Graveman. You should expect some runs here. Very solid chance to win. Um, you know, if you want to pay up for Trout, uh, most expensive outfielder on the board, um, you know, it's not, it might be hard to make some lineups like that. You'll have to make some concessions elsewhere, probably run with a value pitcher. But um, grabbing anybody in that group, anybody in the top seven, really, although, you know, I'm not the biggest. I'm still a little salty that the Braves don't have Andrelton Simmons anymore. I was a really big fan of him. Um, if you got credit for flashy defense, uh, that would be he would be a lot more appealing. Um, but for now, he's just sort of a middle tier um, shortstop option from an offensive perspective. I think there are better options like uh, hell, even Elvis Andrews, another former Brave. God, bring them all back. I want these guys. Um, but stacking up, you know, Kinsler, Justin Upton, and Pujols, uh, Cole Calhoun. Like, I would like that 3-4-5 stack um, for the Angels. And that's on both sites. Lots of value here to be found. Uh, you can even grab some Zach Cozart, although, you know, be a little bit muted if he is hitting towards the bottom of the order. Um, you can do something like uh, Cozart and Calhoun and Pujols. I think that would look okay. I don't necessarily mind... Uh, Simmons, but I don't see a ton of major upside for him, you know, unless he gets a little wacky with the bat. Now, we're going to my squad. I will do my best to be um, impartial, but I'm going to get this out of the way right now. I am a Braves fan. I have been a Braves fan since 1991. It is the first year that I remember watching baseball, and uh, the Braves were a significantly more entertaining team to watch than the Twins, in my opinion. I latched on to the Braves, and I latched on to all of my favorite teams um, when I was six years old. And uh, they were all good. I jumped on the bandwagon. So I was a Braves fan growing up. I am a Washington Redskins football fan although that interest has waned a bit as uh, not a big fan of the way that they run their stuff. But anyway, Redskins, obviously very good in 91, won the Super Bowl, so I hopped, hopped on there, um, and I am a Duke basketball fan. Uh, also a very good time to be a Duke basketball fan in 1991. So that's how I came up with all my favorite teams. I'm originally from the Pennsylvania or I'm originally from the Philly area, actually. So I hate the Phillies and the Eagles with a raging passion. Um, watching the Phillies win a World Series while I was in college was one of the more scarring experiences of my life. Um, luckily, I live in North Carolina now, so seeing the Eagles win a Super Bowl um, didn't hurt me emotionally as bad as it would have if I still lived back home. But... Ultimately, uh, 
When it comes to my sports fandom, I'm cheering directly against anything coming out of Philadelphia and largely everything coming out of the city of New York. Um, I'll cheer for the Knicks from time to time. I will cheer for the Sixers from time to time. Um, I feel like the Sixers are sort of like the the bastard love child of, of Philly because they have like a different vibe and they're like popular everywhere, whereas... You know, like most people don't like the Eagles and Phillies. Anyway, I've had my rant for long enough. I will try to be as um, non-biased about these teams as I can, but not really happy with the Braves right now either. Braves with a 3.9 expected runs, a 47% chance to win, should be 100. Uh, Phillies, 4.1 expected runs, 53% chance to win. We've got Julio Terahan uh, heading up against Aaron Nola, uh, I wanted my boy Julio to be better than he is, but he's not very good. Um, and I wish that uh, I expected less out of Aaron Nola, and he's turning out to be a very solid young arm. So let's take a look at the pitching quick. Let's see how the Braves are going to go to 1-0 and and move to the top of the NLE standings. All right, Julio. Um... Yeah, like I think he's a really interesting punt because there is raw talent in that arm um, and I don't find the Phillies to be uh, particularly scary from an offensive perspective. Um, although, I, you know, I probably should. Uh, Hernandez, Herrera, Santana, and Hoskins are all, you know, really, really nice bats. Um, but, like, if Julio gets through that first inning... Um, there are big things ahead of him. Let's take a look at uh, Atlanta weather. Uh, chance of a thunderstorm at 5 o'clock. Um, it's probably going to be fine, but it is something that you would want to keep an eye on from a pitching perspective. To me, Tehran's just a punt. Um, you can't really dive in too hard. And I think that that is um, more of a FanDuel play than a DK, DK play, where I don't necessarily see him as... Any sort of crazy value. Now, from the hitting side, uh, I'm still dreading that Nick Markakis contract that was signed a couple years ago. Um, I liked him 10 years ago, not so much anymore. Um, there's not really a ton to like. The main bat you'd be looking at would be Freddie Freeman, and I think that he's a, in a really difficult spot um, if we're talking about value. Uh, Freeman, the third highest... Uh, salaried first baseman on DK and I think he provides the least amount of value out of all of those guys third highest salary uh, for FanDuel first baseman as well a little bit better from a value perspective but still um, all those guys that are in and around his salary are grading out on a better uh, points per dollar basis for me so if I'm not going to have a ton of Freddie Freeman and uh I don't necessarily think the Braves are in the best spot. I don't have a ton of recommendations for them. Um, you know, you can do something like Flowers, Marcakis, Tucker. Uh, not a lot of people are probably going to be on that three $2,000 price guys. Um, that would be FanDuel only, but you're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. Um, I'm, I would be avoiding the Braves by all accounts. I just don't see a ton of upside here. Um, they're at least a year away from being anything functional. Um, now for the Phillies, uh, I don't have an, any issue whatsoever uh, grabbing that top three stack, uh, Hernandez, Herrera, and Santana. I think they would be in a very nice spot. Um, you could even uh, rope Hoskins into that. Um, and that dual eligibility on DK makes it a little bit easier if you need to fit all those guys in together. Um, no problems uh, grabbing the Phillies. I think that um, pitching for the Braves could be a little boom bust, so there's no reason to suspect that um, like Santana, Hoskins, Franco, they can smash. They can smash, and uh, you know that game could get out of hand in a hurry. So I wouldn't. I don't have any issues having stacks of the Phillies pains me to say it but um just from a projection and price standpoint i think they're in a good spot 
Nola, uh, 9.4 Ks per nine, 2.6 walks, a 3.7 FIP. Um, I think he's a very nice value play in the, the middle upper tier on FanDuel. Uh, I don't think his price is as entertaining on DK, uh, but Nola is someone that I would be fine rostering on FanDuel. I wouldn't cheer for it. I'd want to lose my money, <laughs> but um, I think that he's in a good spot. Um, I'd rather go to Nola over Archer just from a win perspective. I think they're you know separated by four hundred dollars, but um, I think Nola would feel a little bit safer there. Next up, Padres hosting the Brewers. Uh, Padres three point nine runs expected, forty nine percent chance to win. Uh, 44.1 runs for the Brewers, 51% chance to win. And I don't know if I mentioned it, the, the expected runs are just based on the total and the current money lines for the game. Um, they'll move around a little bit, I guess. Uh, Padres' perspective, no weather concerns. We've got Clayton Richard against uh, Chase Anderson. Um, you know, not the best pitching here. Uh, you know, Clayton is a low-level value guy. Um, 6.5 Ks per nine, not outstanding. Okay walk rate, 4.07 projected FIP is fine. Um, your only perks are really just playing in San Diego here and hoping for a dud of an offensive game. Um, for Chase Anderson, way too, uh, way too expensive on FanDuel. Not a guy that I would want to entertain at all. Um, and then on DK, it's even worse. Uh, he's a complete no play for me. Plenty of value otherwise. Um, if we're looking at the Padres from a hitter perspective, uh, if Chase Headley really is in the two hole, um, not somebody that I'm going to want to have a part of in stacks. Uh, if we look at him on FanDuel for third baseman, he's going to grade out very, very poorly. Um, you'll see big black dot you know, orange-ish color for value. There are way better options for third baseman out there. Um, and really just offense in general is going to be a bit of a struggle. I think that you could grab like Myers and Hosmer as a two-man combo here. Um, Perella is fine from a value perspective if you need like a $2,000 punt. Um, but I don't want to have too much of the Padres outside of maybe one-offs. You know, Margot is not bad. Um, I mean, I like him, you know, good young talent, but not somebody that I want to focus on just because it's the Padres. They're not expected to get a ton of runs here. Even with relatively not good pitching, you're looking at two teams that aren't really um, high-level offensive guys. Unless Ryan Braun's back on the gas or something. Uh, speaking of Ryan Braun, let's take a look at the Brewers. Uh, Brewers, similar scenario to the Padres in that I don't want any part of their two-hole hitter. Um, I'm a big Christian Yelich fan. Uh, I've liked him for ages. Uh, it's cool to see him on the Brewers now instead of toiling away on uh, on the Marlins. Big-time upgrade moving to Milwaukee. That must have been great for him. Sorry to everybody from Milwaukee, but... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and assume that Miami is an entirely more entertaining place to be. Um, no problems having Yelich. Uh, I would have no issues running out Travis Shaw or Ryan Braun. Um, I think a 1-3-4 stack there would be would be fine. Um, you could even get Domingo Santana in on the action um, uh, on DK in particular. Much better values there. Um, you know, you do have to be a little nervous Uh you know, Clayton Richard is a little bit better of a pitcher than Chase Anderson, so they do have a, a bit tougher of a matchup. That's why you're seeing sort of the closeness of this line here. Um, I'm not doing backflips for anybody on the Brewers, but there are options to put some stacks together. Reds and Nats game is already done, so so we'll head to the Royals. Um, Royals hosting the White Sox. Uh, 4.6 expected runs for the Royals. That is, that feels wrong. Let's double check that. I want to make. I want. I want to make sure I'm right here. Um, yeah, slight favorite.
TC ba, 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 eight and a half. Royals, 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 Royals. Why am I missing it? Eight and a half. Yeah, okay. We're good. That looks good to me. Fair enough. Didn't expect it. Royals, 58% chance to win with the 4.6 expected runs. Uh, White Sox, 3.9 expected runs, 42% chance to win. We've got Danny Duffy going up against James Shields. Uh, for Duffy, I think he looks great. Um, not exactly the best pitcher in the world. 4.36 FIP uh, should show you that. But for a guy in the middle tier with a really good chance to pick up a W, 7.8 Ks per nine is not the worst. Um, he's got, you know, solid control, just a solid pitcher. Um, he has the opportunity to provide a decent amount of value. Danny Duffy is a guy that I, I really like as a value play on FanDuel. Um, on DraftKings, I feel the same way. I think he would be perfect on a two-pitcher uh, site. Um, 7700 on DraftKings is a nice price. I have no problems having Danny Duffy as one of my pitchers. And then from a Royals perspective, hitter-wise, um, 4.6 expected runs is a great amount. Um, there should be some offense here, and I think that uh, there are there's a lot of stack options. Any sort of combination of those top six guys, Jay, uh, my boy Wit, Moose Tacos, Duda, uh, you know, like those guys should rake here, and they're all at really nice prices, both sites included. Um, I'm going to have a lot of Royal stacks. That's a, definitely a direction I want to go today. Man, I miss, I've miss. i missed baseball. This NBA grind, man, it's been getting me. Uh, Royal stacks look very nice. Uh Excited to see Solaire. I'd love for him to be bumped up one uh, one slot in the batting order, but I'll take what I can get. I don't think there's a lot of top end uh, for Solaire on DK, but on FanDuel, you know, you can grab anybody really from the Royals top section of their lineup, and I think you're going to put together a really nice stack. And I feel sort of similar on DK. Um, but I don't think that Cuthbert and Solaire look as appealing um, uh, on DK as they do on uh, on FanDuel. So Royals for me, very nice stackable team on FanDuel. Very nice stackable team on DK, but a little bit less so. But no problems having a ton of them. Uh, James Shields is not the James Shields of 10 years ago. Uh, 5.58. Uh, projected FIP is not good whatsoever. Um, Royals bats should should dance tonight. Now, like I said, Shields um, should not be rostered in either format. Uh, seven Ks per nine, almost four walks per nine. Horrible, horrible FIP. Um, not not a guy you want to have any part of tonight or this afternoon. Um, now, from the hitter's perspective. You know, you don't, if you're not a big Danny Duffy guy, um, there are some options here um, with White Sox sticks. Uh, I think getting Moncada at 2,900 at the top of the lineup, um, you know, he's a, a young dude who I think has a really bright future, exceptional prospect. Um, you can grab some sort of Moncada, Tim Anderson, Jose Abreu combo. Uh, Anderson and Abreu, not exactly the best values, uh, at least on FanDuel, but, um, you know, Anderson and is... I'm not a huge Anderson fan, as you can tell by the projected 290 on base percentage, but if you need to put him in a stack, you know, it's probably okay on FanDuel. I'd avoid him completely on DK, but I think something like a, a Moncada, Abreu, Garcia stack would look pretty nice, um, especially on DK. They, they, all, they both grade out really well. Um, I, you know, you can get to Wellington Castillo. If we hop over to catcher here, um, 2,400 is not a bad price. I think he grades out with a little bit of value. Uh, if you're not a Danny Duffy believer, then, you know, getting Wellington Castillo in a lineup is, is totally fine. And, uh, you know, while Matt Davidson does grade out okay at that price point, um, he's a dude without a stick. Uh, sub 300 on base percentage projected, sub 400 slugging percentage. 
it's hard to get excited about that. Um, he's not the same sort of athlete that Man Moncada is. So for me, um, I'll have little bits of the White Sox. Like I'd rather have uh, Garcia as just a random filler instead of being a part of a stack. Uh, but you can get to something in like the four, five, six range, or if you wanted to do a Brayu and Garcia, um, or Mancada, Brayu, Garcia, and DK. You know, those are all things that I can get behind. Three games left. Now we're heading to the later slate. Uh, we've got the Dodgers hosting the Giants. Um, if we take a look at weather for the Dodgers, crystal clear skies, no worries there. Clayton Kershaw going up against Ty Block. Uh, Dodgers 4.7 expected runs, 72% chance to win. Giants 2.8 or 2.8 expected runs, 28% uh, chance to win. This should be an annihilation. The Giants are bad, 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 bad. They look like an all-star team from six years ago. Belt, McCutcheon, Posey, Longoria, Pence, Austin Jackson. I feel like I just fired up MLB The Show 13. Um, obviously, Kershaw is the, a high-end pitching play today. I think that he uh, looks significantly better on DK than he does on FanDuel. I would rather go to, like, I don't know what would be a good... Like, Kershaw and Duffy, you know, you can get there. Or... Um, yeah, I mean, somebody like Kershaw and Duffy would be okay. Kershaw and Dylan Bundy, maybe. Um, we all know how good Kershaw is. Um, I have no problem having a bunch of him, and I will likely have an okay amount of him on FanDuel, although I do prefer Sale. Now, Dodgers bats. Um, you want to stick to the top end here. Taylor, Seager, Puig, and Bellinger. Um, they all look good. Uh, they mash. Um, Seeger, Puig, Bellinger, Kemp, all guys 470 or higher in slugging. Um, Kemp, not not exactly the highest end projection. He's a little bit boom bust with that low on base percentage. But if it goes well, having some combo of their one through five will get you uh, where you want to be. They're expecting to see a lot of runs. This game shouldn't be close. Um, Dodgers are a fun, fun team to have a part of today. Um, I wouldn't go further down than Kemp. I don't think that Ismani Grandal or uh, Hernandez or Forsyth are guys that I'd really be looking for. But, you know, Seeger looks great. And I think Puig, 2,800. Sorry, guys, my nose is so itchy. I can't. My office is just really dry. I need a humidifier. Um, Puig at 2,800 on uh, FanDuel, 3,900 on DK. Um He's a good value on both sides, but he's a tremendous value, in my opinion, uh, for an outfielder on FanDuel tonight. If I open this up and grab Puig, um, where's he hiding? Ba -ba -ba -ba, Puig. Um, that's just a really, really great spot, in my opinion, um, to be a part of a stack. Lots of upside. Dude can rake. You know, not, wouldn't be surprised to see a home run out of Puig today. I don't generally predict stuff like that because it's kind of ridiculous, but, you know, Puig looks great. Uh, the Giants, as you can tell by this sea of red, you don't really want anything here. You can use Brandon Belt in a one-off scenario at first, but um, I don't know why you would want to. Running head-on into Kershaw is going to be tough. You're just trying to be contrarian if you want to go and stack against him. And then... Uh, there's no need to be using Ty in any format uh, from a pitching perspective. So now we'll go to the D-backs. Ooh, that should just be Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks. So Diamondbacks, 4.3 expected runs, 51% chance to win. Rockies, 4.2 expected runs, 49% chance to win. We've got Pat Corbin and John Gray uh, running head into each other. Let's check out the weather in Arizona. Shockingly, it's dry and clear. Good to know. Um, both pitchers are solid. Uh, Corbin, not the most uh, strikeout happy guy, but 4.14 FIP uh, lowers, you know, doesn't give up a ton of bombs, so it's something to keep in mind. And then uh, for the Rockies, John Gray, big strikeout guy, young guy. Um, 
3.1 walks per nine, uh, sub four FIP. I like both of these guys. Uh, I think that Corbin and Gray both grade out pretty well. I think that Corbin is a more interesting play on FanDuel, uh, significantly less salary. I don't think that his upside is as low as the gap in their salary, so I would actually prefer Corbin, oddly enough. And then on DK, um, they're kind of uh, reversed. I think Corbin is still a, val a nice value play, but I'm getting a little nervous that I'm not recording. Yeah, I am. But uh, I think John Gray looks like a really, really nice low salary guy. Uh, could be a good value to pair with, you know, one of the bigger pitcher studs um, on DraftKings. Now, from a hitting perspective, uh, for the Diamondbacks, I don't see a ton to like on a value end. You can get to anyone from Peralta, Pollock, uh, Goldschmidt, and Lamb as, um, you know, good bats. They, these are all, those four guys are all, you know, really nice hitters, but I don't think the pricing is is perfect for them. On DK, though, I think that uh, they're significantly more in play, and I think that you could work a Vila in uh, to a stack on DraftKings. So I would go down as far as five guys there. Mm -hmm. How good is five guys? I can go for a burger. Maybe I'll do that for lunch. Anyway, um, lots of value for stacks on DraftKings for the Diamondbacks. And uh, nothing to super duper worry about, you know. That while the pitchers are good value plays, there's nothing to say that these games can't go awry. So I'd have no problem having anybody from the Diamondbacks in any uh, any higher end stacks. I really like Pollock today. If we're just talking about you know guys that I have a weird feeling for. Uh, for the Rockies. Um, you know they're just sort of like assortedly okay. Uh, you can get to a stack of like DJ LeMahieu and Carlos Gonzalez. You could add uh, Arenado to that stack if you need to, although he's a little bit pricey. Although he should be, you know, he's obviously exceptional. Um, number one, well, second high, t tied for first uh, in projected um, or in salary on FanDuel, but you know Bryant with significantly more upside because of that matchup. Um, so, you know, Bryant would be somebody I'd be leaning to a little bit more. Um, you might be able to do a little bit more contrarian work having Arenado. Uh, on DK, you know, everybody looks pretty similar, so you can get any sort of stack you'd like out of those first four or five guys. You know, you could probably all go down to six and grab Desmond, but Arenado and Story are not the best values on FanDuel. Um, so I would be a little bit... I would, I would try to pick and choose a little bit more on FanDuel, whereas DraftKings, I think you can safely grab whoever you need. The final game of this massively long video uh, would be the Mariners hosting the Indians. Uh, Mariners, three expected runs and a 37% chance to win. The Indians, four expected runs, 63% chance to win. We've got Felix Hernandez, surprise, surprise, starting the season off for the Mariners. Uh, not the same guy any longer. 7.6 Ks uh, per nine, three walks per nine, and a 4.35 FIP. Heading up against Corey Kluber, 10 Ks per nine, uh, 2.1 uh, walks per nine, and a 3.2 FIP. Kluber looks really good. Um, grades out really well on FanDuel. Uh, I would probably rather have Kluber than Kershaw on FanDuel. And then on DK, you can make a case that Corey Kluber is the best pitcher on the board from a value perspective. Uh, grades out exceptionally well. Um, I would like to have a lot of him. Only fear is just getting somebody uh, that plays at 10 o'clock. You know, I don't. I never like things like that. But it's in Seattle. Um, no really worries about weather. So I'd have no problem having an absolute ass ton of Corey Kluber on DraftKings. Um, offensively, for the Mariners, you want to avoid the entire team. I want no part of it, including old man Ichiro. Um, there's no upside on FanDuel for me, uh, for anybody from the Mariners. If you want to get cute, you can have a stack of the four guys at the top of uh, the Mariners lineup. But, you know, D. Gordon and Segura aren't exactly mashing the cover off the ball. You're basically preying on Cano and Cruz to have, you know, a home run a piece and to drive those dudes in so i don't really want to run up against Corey kluber so i'm going to avoid uh, the mariners offensively 
Now for the Indians, um, it's not really the best either. It's not as if Felix Hernandez is like some schlub. Uh, he's probably feeling pretty fresh right now. Um, Jose Ramirez is not pulling through correctly, unfortunately. That is That should be um, not the pitcher Jose Ramirez. It should be the hitter Jose Ramirez. Let's make a quick tweak to that. You know what? It's not going to matter right now. Naming conventions in baseball are a pain in the ass. Um, very, very big pain in the ass. We'll iron that out. Um, only guys that I would be looking at from the Indians would be the top four guys. And in particular, I think Kipnis on FanDuel is the only guy of real value. Um, but for me, I don't see a ton to love uh, from the Indians' offense. I would much rather grab my offense elsewhere. The high end is good. Lindor, you know, Jose Ramirez, Encarnacion, these guys can rake. Um, but I don't think their prices are backing that up outside of, uh, you know, Kipnis on FanDuel. So that's all I've got right now, guys. Uh, I know that was a really long video. Still working through how we want these sort of videos to proceed. You know, starting at the beginning of next week, it won't just be my rambling voice for an hour. We'll have another, we'll have another person on here so that we could have a little bit of a back and forth. Uh, baseball's tough. It's a lot of data, a lot of stuff to look at. Um, but I hope that this was a decent walkthrough to the slate. Uh, pay attention to awesomeo.com today for articles on hitters, articles on the best stacks, um, articles on pitchers. We're going to have a lot of content coming out, um, so keep an eye on that. Uh, with all that said, again, my name is Josh Engelman. You can find me at awesomeo.com or on Twitter at Josh Engelman. Um, and uh, get used to me because uh, baseball content is coming. Welcome back to the MLB season. Best of luck, everybody. Have a good day.